Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. And I am back today with another Cricut project. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make envelopes with liners. This is a really quick and easy project that you can use to make envelopes for craft projects, for weddings, for mailing Christmas cards, for sending your brother an angry message, whatever you really need an envelope for, but I don't know why you'd go to all that trouble for something like an angry message. Maybe you need angry confetti. I don't know. Either way, you can use these envelopes for whatever you like. I like to use them when I'm making display pieces like my little mailbox with all my pretty envelopes because I want the, the papers to be thicker card stocks so that are gonna hold up over time, that have pretty patterns, that go together, that, that are just prettier and fancier than a, a normal envelope would be. So it's a very simple project. I use all these files from the Cricut Access Library, so I will leave links for those down below or at least names so that you can search for them but if you need to know how to make an envelope with your Cricut this is a quick and easy beginner level tutorial so that we can do that let's jump in good morning y'all so today i'm going to show you how to take a little bit of cardstock we've got this um, bulk cardstock got a little bit of light pink cardstock. This is just from the craft store because I didn't find any in my Cricut stash. And a bit of craft board to make pretty envelopes. So, ta-da! I made a few last night. You can see I used the cardstock, pretty cardstock. And this is the craft board. So for the craft board, there is an extra step. I have to cut two envelopes, one front side up, one back side up, because it is not double-sided. And then I just cut out this middle part and slid it inside, exactly like we're gonna do for this insert, except the full size instead of the small size. So this is a very easy project. You can use them for actual envelopes. You can use them for wedding envelopes. You can use them for a craft project, which is what we're doing today. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and hop over to the Cricut Access Library to pull up this cut file because it is in the, the Access Library. I'll also leave a link for this Access file. These are another envelope set. You can see I use the exact same materials to make some coordinating pieces for the little DIY letter to Santa box that I'm making. So let's get started. All right, so now that we've got everything pulled up and set to medium cardstock, which is this one. So this does not actually have a weight. It's just the Cricut bulk cardstock. I always cut it on medium cardstock, 80 pounds, and I set the pressure to more, and that works perfectly. But since this is an envelope, we are going to be scoring it first with our little scoring wheel. And I've got the number one attachment on here. There's a one and a two. The two is for thicker materials. And 
Cricut will actually tell you right on the screen if you need the first or the second wheel. So for this one, we need the first wheel and we are going to go ahead and hit go. And all this is going to do is score this box right here so that we can make these folds crisp and clean. You don't have a scoring wheel, you can skip this step or you can use a scoring pin, um, which is the original version of the Cricut's scoring wheel, but it does make things so much easier. All right, now we're gonna use that fine point blade to actually cut the envelope. Okay, so apparently I had two pieces of card stuck on there. As you can see, all I did was turn off my machine. I think this piece is still okay, so we're gonna try to restart, okay? All right, so just taking that score line off on the Cricut Access file since this already is scored. And we don't want it to score it twice in the wrong place. I don't know how those were stuck together. All right, that's just one on there. Take two. So I believe that worked fine. Let's see. Whenever you are dealing with cardstock or copy paper, you want to use a light grip mat and you always want to peel the mat away from the paper, not the paper away from the mat or your paper will become very, very curled. Which is not the goal. So this is the excess. And here is our little envelope. This is where it messed up a little bit because I actually had two pieces. I'm just gonna clean it up a smidge with my scissors. All right, and then to go ahead and use those score lines, we're just gonna fold these in. If you do a lot of paper projects, you can use what's a, a, called a bone knife to score these cuts or these fold lines and make them extra crisp and clean. Since I don't want to get out my bone knife, I just use my brayer for these little projects like this. Over, go over all those seams from the other side. If you 
really want them to be crisp, I just run a nail down them. See how that lays down even flatter. All right, last but not least, we're gonna put it together with some tape. So we wanna put this right at the corner here. Make sure it is not tall enough to be seen over this guy right here. Oh, out of tape. That's funny. I'm going to have to cut this down because it's too much. Go right there. This we're actually gonna put up here. I put a little bit for when we do our liner. I wouldn't have cut that, but since it cut itself, there we go. So now we're gonna fold this over, hold these down, and I start in the middle and fold out and up. Let's go ahead, cut the liner. You know what? This paper I found is not 100% square. So I'm going to load it this side because this side you can see has that little strip. I'm going to change this to copy paper. Because it is, is a much lighter cardstock. The copy paper at 20 pounds works much better than the cardstock setting for this one. It definitely rips if you use that heavier cardstock setting. Load in the scoring wheel. That's just scoring that top line for the flap to fold over. And now we'll cut that piece. If you're not sure, every time it goes under here, it is detecting which blade is in the, in the housing so that it can tell it has a scoring wheel or it has the fine point blade. So the Cricut is literally double checking that you have the right blade in place, which is nice because when you've made so many of these, like I have, you start to forget to switch them out and you're like, oh no, I just set it to score with the fine point blade. Don't worry, Cricut will not let you make that mistake. our liner and I'm just going to show you if you pull it this way this is what you get instead of that nice flat piece of paper you get this curly mess I'm going to go put this under a flat book now So now we're going to line this bad boy up and the liner is cut so that it is just a smidge smaller on the sides and the top. So I'm going to line the cut, the cut this bold line up, make sure it is equal all the way around the top and then push it down on that tape. There we go. Now if I want to, I can fold this over and really push it down and that is my envelope. Voila. 
Hope you guys liked this little project. It's super simple, super easy. There are a million different files in the Cricut Access Library for different intricate um, cuts, for different ways to use even like the pen tool to add some extra pizzazz or a pattern. If you don't have patterned cardstock, there's some really cute files where you can use regular cardstock and the pen to make your own envelopes. So hope you guys liked this and I'm going to go work on my little, well, you can see my camera. Say hi guys. I'm going to go work on my little letters to Santa box. <laughs> Bye. All right, y'all. How easy was that? So this is a pretty, I mean, I made a bunch of these in under an hour, uh, especially if you're using the Cricut cardstocks, they cut like a dream. Um, I did use a thinner card stock for the liners and a few of them and a few glitter card stocks on a few because I wanted a little bit of a diverse palette here um, and a lot of glam. But the Cricut card stocks cut great. Just make sure you use the settings. I used a medium 80 grit card stock setting for the Cricut card stock. I don't know why they don't say what the weight is on the package, but I also cut a few more intricate envelopes. Um, and those were also a Cricut Access Library cut file. They worked pretty well um, with the thicker cardstock, with that thinner paper, with that intricate design. It took a lot of sheets to find the right sighting, settings, not sightings, settings. So as long as you're willing to fiddle around with it, maybe waste a few sheets of cardstock. If you only have one sheet, like, don't try it <laughs> unless you know the settings. But especially if you're using thinner cardstock, it's going to take a while to find that perfect setting because it's not a Cricut cardstock. It was just something I had in my stash. But for that Cricut cardstock, you're pretty safe. So I hope you liked this project. If you did, like, comment, subscribe. I have lots more basic Cricut tutorials um, to share with you as well as lots of fun holiday projects. Since it is Christmas time, you may not need a Christmas holiday envelope if you're watching this in July. Envelopes are just as good for summer, but if you liked this project and you want to see what I'm up to, like, comment, subscribe, turn on those notifications, and I will see you in the next Cricut project. Bye, y'all. What am I going to do with this one? I should send an email, email, an angry brother letter. Well, you did not finish distributing the gravel for my gravel pathway. I need you to finish that immediately. Confetti bomb.